Hello, everybody. How are you? Hope you are fine for this wonderful topic, Inspiring Democracies. So I am very proud to be there and to have this opportunity to present this wonderful case on how inspire democracy and efficiency. So uh, what I would like is to share this case with Francoise. Uh, yes, I'm also very proud to be here, even if it's not my usual place, uh, because, as you said, I'm working with the French government uh, in a department called Secret Secretary General for Modernizing Public Action, which is a department from the Prime Minister, uh, Manuel Valls, and uh, I'm uh, in charge of innovation and insights. And as uh, perhaps I can add also a word, <laughs> Uh, you say you've spoken about uh, efficiency, and for me it's very important, this word efficiency. Because if you want to uh, reinforce democracy, you, um, you have to, uh, to, to build trust. Uh, you have uh, also to make people uh, participate with you. So it's very important because if your public policies are not seen as coherent and efficient, uh, you can't do that. So, thanks. So, my name is Eric Sangler, I am from BVA and in charge of our BVA Nudge Unit with my colleagues, friends and co-authors, Etienne Bressou, who is here and somewhere, Richard Bordenave, there. <laughs> Thanks a lot, it's a real pleasure to work daily with so smart and nice guys. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. But we have to start. So let's start about this topic, how to inspire democracy. So first, what we would like is to see what has inspired us first. We are on the shoulders of three giants, three genius. Three genius, but I would like to see the first one. Here is the first one. I was happy to hear his name before. His name is Daniel Kahneman. Daniel Kahneman is the father of behavioral economics, the grandfather of behavioral economics. He has received his Nobel Prize in 2002 for his work on how real people make decisions in real life. And it's really a shift in how we understand decision-making process because we are very far from being rational. We are emotional, we are social, we are context-driven, we make a lot of mistakes. And it is important to know. So, from a great behavioral economics, Dan Ariely says we are more close to Homer Simpson than Superman of the mind. So it is the starting point, the first giant. The two other giants are Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein, the father of the nudge approach. They have published in 2008 an acclaimed book. This book is Nudge. It's not only a book on 40 years of behavioral economics learnings, it's also about a new approach, the nudge approach. This new approach is about how to help people to make good decisions, better decisions for themselves or for their country or for the planet with very small change in what they call architecture of choice. So, nudge at the end is how to convert behavioral economics learning into action with small change to help people to take better decisions. We have now some government, Obama administration, and the government of David Cameron, which used this wonderful approach. So, just an example of this approach. It is an example developed in UK with the Behavioral Insight uh, team. The question of the government was very simple. How to increase the payment of lead taxpayer with a lever which is social norm? 
The idea from the behavioral insight team was very simple, only to change one sentence in the letter the government sent to lead taxpayer requesting them to pay. This sentence is this why nine out of ten people pay their tax on time. It is the only one change. What is the result of this? Plus 2.8 million of pounds in the very little town where this experiment was conducted. So you change one sentence, the cost is zero, and you have 2.8 million pounds. It is the power of the nudge approach. Just for those who don't know this approach. So the question for us, thanks Etienne, is how market research insight can inspire powerful nudge? How to improve this approach? So, what we would like is to share with you a case study to illustrate our methods. And I'm the case study. So, um, uh, before speaking about an issue that everyone in this room will appreciate, I mean uh, declaring incomes, uh, I want to stress on um, an issue, on a challenge that every country is facing nowadays, is to make people switch to digital channels. It's very important in keeping the same level of quality. But it's easy to say, and it's very difficult to have significant results. So, um, as you can see, um, in France, we have two ways of uh, declaring uh, our revenue. The first is the paper form. Uh, the paper form, you know, you receive it at home, and uh, you check the data, and you, you send it. It's very easy. And uh, the online form, you do the same in two clicks uh, in the tax um, website, in the tax administration website. But as you can see, 70% of the people still prefer to use the paper form. Why? Is it because uh, it was the usual uh, way of doing? Is it because they lack, you know, to, uh, to take it and bring it directly uh, to the people at the counter? Um, but the transition is very slow, considering that the penetration rate of Internet in France is 75%. So um, it's a huge problem for the government because uh, the paper form is 40 times uh, the cost of the, um, of, the, of the paper form, sorry, is 40 times higher than uh, the online one if you consider all the processing, going at the counter, etc. So our question is uh, very simple, is how to accelerate uh, the transition from paper form to online declaration. So uh, for that, perhaps, um, Eric, we can share the new no. approach we have? Yeah, we'd like to share it. Uh, okay, so the challenge for us is how to start from the nudge theory to create a nudge citizen-centric methodology. What is our objective? Our objective is to create powerful nudge, to accelerate this change of uh, the online website. So, what we have done is a process, the name of this process is the Nudge Lab. This process is based on four fundamentals. The first fundamental is using behavioral economic as a framework. The second one is considering architecture of choice and nudge mechanism as the only one solution, meaning we don't care about new product, new service, we are really on architecture of choice. Third key element is we found, uh, we have to find solution thanks to an analysis of behavioral experience, behavioral user, sorry, the user experience. And fourth is about 
co-creation. Co-creation is used not only expert in the classical way to do nudge, but co-creation to inspire creativity and ID generation. More concretely, how does it work? It is a four steps process. The first step is an ethno research with the lens of behavioral economics, meaning we try to understand explicit and implicit influence that uh, are important to drive people's behavior. So it's about the user experience and finding behavioral insight grounded in this user experience. So we have insight at the end of this coming from the analysis of social influence, of emotional influence, environmental influence, and so on. Second step is what we call the Nudge Lab itself. It is a one-day co-creation workshop including nudge expert, including sectorial experts, including clients, including creative users. The objective and the advantage is to stimulate creation. Because we have backgrounds which are different, we create ideas which are very new. Third step is selection, pre-selection of the nudge. Here, we take into account the constraints. In Nudge Lab, it's about creativity. In this alpha day session, it's about pre-selecting the best nudge. We will see how after in a standardized and rigorous way. And last important uh, step is to test the efficacy of our nudge versus a control group. What does happen? Do we are we successful to change people's behavior when we use the nudge? And which one is the most powerful? So now with uh, François, ah no, no, I am not to speak to, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> nudge Lab, it's not only a process, it's also some tools. Uh, I would like to share rapidly three of these uh, tools. The first one is what we call the behavior change stairs. It is a way to help workshop participants to create it and to sync nudge at each step of the process. For example, which nudge to make taxpayers thinking about the online solution? Because at the very beginning, they don't think. The usual way is to use the paper form. So which nudge to think about this? After, for example, how and which nudge to make when you have decided to think about this online solution, to convince them to do online and to make the uh, declaration online, and so on. So it is a tool to guide creativity in each step of the process. A second tool is what we call the nudge cards. We have designed a worldwide nudge, nudge database, and we select some of these nudge to inspire creativity of participants, meaning we share this example, which gives a clear idea to everybody of what is a nudge, what is a successful nudge. It is a very simple uh, card, like you can see uh, there. So here it's a tool to inspire creativity. Third tool is what we call the nudge matrix. The nudge matrix is used during the selection step and we try to prioritize the different uh, nudge, thanks to this matrix, taking into account the potential power of each nudge and the cost and risk associated to each nudge. So it is possible to locate each nudge on the matrix and to make a pre-selection. So here are the process and some of the different tools we use. Now, two examples of what we have done in 2014. Yes. So we will give uh, two examples. First example is the emailing uh, campaign we've made. We have totally redesigned the email uh, for using some what we call traditional uh, levers of the nudge to encourage 
taxpayers to go on, online. Uh, first is science, you know, you, you, you put the emphasis on declare uh, your income. Second should be um, the social norm, which is very important. 13.6 million of people have declared online. Thirdly, which is also very important, it's incentives. You can go because it's fast, it's flexible, it's safe. So uh, that also is very important. And what also is very important is a call to action. You can go now. Now we can go to un propre and declare your outcome. So as you can see, we have, we've used uh, levers very uh, simple, very uh, easy to understand, uh, to uh, capture the attention of the taxpayers on the interest of online. Uh, we've also worked on the tax return notice. You know uh, what we do often in the administration when you have to change something, you know? You just change a sentence or two. You know, you take uh, the previous uh, notice, just add uh, here, for instance, the opportunity to use internet. Uh, so for the last campaign, 2014, we decided to totally rewrite uh, this uh, declaration in an uh, internet per default option. So all the text is focused on uh, the interest of uh, using uh, the online to highlight all the advantages of uh, the online declaration. So, um, what should be interesting for you now is to know uh, the results. Um, firstly, I have to say that we have made a very big randomized uh, control test to evaluate the weight of each nudge, but uh, we don't have yet the results, so I can't speak about that, but I can speak about uh, the results of the 2014 campaign. So do we have increased the number of taxpayers using uh, internet? Uh, so, as you can see, uh, it was seen as a very big success because we have one million point one more taxpayer uh, taking the online solution, and uh, it's um, the double of uh, the previous years. And the minister was very happy, and he said that there were excellent results that demonstrate the involvement of tax administration in the increase of digital services. Uh, so perhaps, and in conclusion, uh, we can share the key uh, uh, takeaways that we have and, and, and see how this first step is very important in the efficiency of making uh, public policies in France. Thanks, Françoise. So now what we have learned. So on a double point of view, first, we would like to share with you some advice if you want to use, and we highly recommend you to use, the nudge approach. It is about golden rules, and we consider there are five golden rules. First one is about ethics. You could use a nudge approach only if it is in the interest of people or interest of the country and letting people having freedom of choice. So freedom of choice and interest of the guy who is nudge. Second is if you want to be successful in your nudge, you have to base your ID on the user experience in context. It's really fundamental. It's not about what people claim, it's about what people do. Third, because it is a new approach, we have to be open and humble. We have to test, we have to learn, we have to adapt what we do. Fourth, it's about final evaluation. We have to make a behavioral evaluation in real life to test and to demonstrate that the NEDGE has an effect to encourage people to adopt the desired behavior. And fifth, which is also very important, to engage stakeholders from the beginning, because at the end there are a lot of discussion about the implementation of Nudge, because it's very new. And if you have the engagement of stakeholders from the beginning, you are successful to implement uh, the Nudge. Uh -huh. To go very fast. 
So um, the outcome of it, um, I, I would just stress on two ideas that you have uh, that is very important for democracy, is uh, to stress on user experience, on user's behavior, because it's often said, but it's rarely made, really. Uh, the second is the pragmatism. You know, in the French culture, especially in civil service, uh, we are not very pragmatic, we are very abstract. So uh, this pragmatism you know, consid consisting in uh, testing all the nudges to, to, to evaluate the weight, uh, I think it's very important. And moreover, uh, uh, this experiment, which is very embryonic, you know, uh, shows the magical link between uh, the research, applied research, tools and methodologies, and the creation of social value. So for that, it's a big success. And uh, because of this success, now we are um, working with um, uh, transportation safety, public health, and well-being uh, at work. So it's very interesting, and it's only a beginning. Thanks a lot, Françoise. I would like to give uh, a last, to have a last second to thank the team because this approach has been a work team from the beginning and also thanks uh, one other people who has inspired us, Elvis, thanks to thanks Elvis, Elvis yes. and for Part our title. Team. So thanks a lot and hope it has inspired you.